Empire. Deal back to Hachimura. Oh, um, first off, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. It was more just shocking to hear from him and understanding that he gets the most assists from me and the most spoon fed baskets ever. You know, the culture is actually damn good. To sit up there and to say you don't have a culture problem in the nation's capital, everything about the organization points to a culture issue. When a guy took a and in another guy's shoe. I'm a little pissed off about it, but I know how I am. I was kind of expecting it. It's disrespectful. It was like Eric. Killmonger going for total domination. What hell is mine? We're not gonna be fucking sunk this year. We're the Stanley Cup champions. Yeah! Thank you for joining us today. We are the Beltway Sports Bros. I'm Matt Vazana. As always, my brother Noel. First thing, we want to thank Hico Sticks for sponsoring the show. Hico Sticks is an incredible hand eye coordination tool that Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey and UFC fighter Conor McGregor swear by. It's spelled H-E-C-O-S-T-I-X. Go to HecoSticks.com to see all the videos and testimonials on the product. When you get there, use our promo code BeltwayBros at checkout to receive 10% off your entire order. Again, that promo code is BeltwayBros. All right. Noel, it's almost Labor Day. Any big plans this weekend or what? Nope. All right, let's move on. (laughs) (laughs) Nope. I do have a little bit of sad news you told me. uh, Did I? Yeah, you're, you're... you're out of the playoffs and kickball. I'm yeah. sorry about that, Matt. I told you hey. to bring me in. Shit, we could have even brought Natalie up there. She has a she bomb, would. man. Yeah. I, we would have taken you, know, you to the promised land. I'm only one man. Went three I for know. four, three RBIs. I'm I sorry. mean, we lost four to three, and we just got to find some better talent out you there. You do. You do. It's, it's going to be a big off season for you guys. Yeah, we're going to have to make some hard decisions. <laughs> and you know, nothing personal, guys, whoever's listening to this, uh. but you know who you are. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> all right, let me get through this real quick. We have an official website, podcast players right on the front page. You don't have to download anything. You just hit play. The website, imagine that, is BeltwaySportsBros.com. As usual, please follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and the Facebook group. Just search Beltway Sports Bros. One last thing, if you are listening to this show right now, please hit subscribe or the follow button so you don't have to miss a single episode. It's really easy. Just hit the button and go from there. All right, this is going to be fun. You know... The- <laughs> this, this, I swear to God, is like pennies from heaven. Pun intended on that, by the way. Thank you, Kirk. I think if you've listened to the show before, I think you know that we're not the biggest fans of Kirk Cousins. You may be a bigger fan than I am. Oh, I'm not yeah. Sure. <laughs> I defend him all the time. He's up there with Snyder with me. Right. But I um, wanted to start things <laughs> off with our old buddy, Kirk. And I'm sure many of you have heard this. And I mean, there's been a lot, a lot of chatter on social media about this guy. Good. And, um, yeah. I and not it. for good reasons. I, I love know. it. God, I love it. It's so great. <laughs> Fucking hate uh, this asshole. All right, just settle down over there. Let me get through. <laughs> all right, so Cousins had an interview on uh, 10 questions with Kyle Brandt, and he was asked about his thoughts on the COVID pandemic. Quote, if I get it, I get it. I'm going to ride it out. I'm going to let nature do its course. <laughs> Survival of the fittest kind of approach. And just say, if it knocks me out, it knocks me out. I'm going to be okay, you know, even if I die. If I die, I die. I kind of have peace about that. Jesus Christ. What is he, freaking Drago? <laughs> that so many people have posted that. Like, <laughs> if he dies, if he, he dies, dies, he dies. What an idiot. So Kyle Brandt had a follow-up question, asked Cousins of his concern level in getting the virus on a scale of 1 to 10. One is the person who says masks are stupid. And 10 is, I'm not leaving my master bedroom for the next 10 years. Kirk <laughs> replied, <laughs> I'm about 0. .00001. I think I got the zeros right on that. All right. So Kirk got a lot of backlash for that. And of course, he, he wanted to clarify his statement a little bit. So Kurt said, quote, what I would echo again now is that while the virus does not give me a great amount of personal fear, there's still great reason for me to engage in wearing a mask and social distancing and washing my hands as frequently as I can and following protocols that have been set in place. Obviously, to be respectful and considerate of other people, which is very important. I have peace. I don't believe that I can control the outcome of my life. There's many things out of my control, but obviously my faith is at the foundation of my life and I trust the Lord to handle things. And if something happens, I trust him, capital H, to have a plan and to use even a pain, a setback, adversity, to use that to help grow me and teach me more about him, end quote. 
Uh, that was a mouthful. All That's right, so sure. <laughs> <laughs> I got to sit back. I for need a, a second, break. Take a drink of water. Go ahead. Look, this fucking guy, man. He makes a statement that is true to his heart. Mm-hmm. He doesn't give a shit about this thing. He thinks it's flat earth or BS. Right. And now he's doing his usual cousins, trying to weasel his way out of it. This guy's a freaking joke. He's Eddie Haskell. He is. He is. The funny thing is, he says the survival of the fittest. Does that really fit the bill with what his beliefs are? That's kind of Darwinian theory there, buddy. Easy. You might get ostracized from your church by saying things like that. (laughs) I mean, there's people that get hanged for shit like that. Especially, I'm sure, at his church. (laughs) You know, his church is like the guys that are they're speaking in tongues and like falling all over the place and shit. I mean, yeah. <laughs> this freaking guy, man. How does he fit in with a football team? I don't know. He's such a dork. Imagine this fucking geek <laughs> walking into a locker room. And I've said this before. Like, hey, guys, like, um, let's let's all come together and pray. They're like, dude, like, get the fuck. I just rem- ran a train on yeah. you like, last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's pray. Whatever. It, it, yeah. I, <laughs> the problem with it is, is these theories And these ideas that he has are dangerous. Totally. Just shut the hell up, man. If these are your beliefs, leave them at home. These are not constructive in any shape or form. Well, he thinks they are. Yeah. He thinks it's bullshit. Yeah. He's a guy who, you know, thinks that it's a conspiracy or I guarantee he's one of those idiots. Yeah. And if you think that way, I apologize, but you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. So, you know, 184,000 people have fucking died from this thing. Because of this dickhead is going around and saying it's not a big deal, there's actually people who listen to this guy. Right. I I was having an argument on Twitter with this guy who basically said, uh, you know, his body, his choice bullshit, you know, whatever. I'm I'm paraphrasing. I'm like, this guy is actually a role model for people. Yeah. You know, and there are people that listen to him and they're like, holy shit. You know, how many people is he affecting by maybe they were wearing a mask or were taking it seriously? And now he's saying, eh, you know, it's bullshit, but I'm just going to play the game because I have to. They're forcing him to wear a mask at Vikings training camp. Oh, yeah. And that's another part of it. It's like you've seen the NFL teams, how seriously they're taking this thing. And this guy's going around and saying the complete opposite. Right. They're going through all these protocols and he's just like, you know, rolling his eyes every time that they they got to swab his nose or whatever. Everybody's not entitled to their opinion. Right. Okay. And people need to get past that crap. This is a factually based thing. And people especially that have influence on others, you are not entitled to your opinion when you're potentially going to be putting people in danger. Now, when we're talking about using an athlete as a platform, this isn't the one, you fucking idiot. Bible thump all you want, but don't do anything to hurt other people. And that's essentially what you're doing. Right. You know, this Jesus take the wheel shit, do that at a freaking country music concert. All right? (laughs) This isn't the freaking forum for that. People are potentially going to be listening to you. And they go on these things and they act like hot shots. He tried to be cool. Yeah. You're the furthest thing from cool, Kirk. There's nothing worse than a freaking geek that tries to be cool. And you know what's less cool? You know what I would have respected more out of you, Kirk? If you said, you know what? Yeah, fuck off. I don't believe this shit. And yeah, if I die, I die. I'm not wearing a damn mask. I'm not doing a damn thing. At least I would have said, well, he's an idiot, but at least he has a set of balls on him. Well, now he's yeah. like, um, well, I didn't really mean that. I meant that the Lord has a plan. Like, shut uh, the hell up. Always using that as a... It must be so damn nice for people yeah. to just be able to do that. To be able to just always have that in your back pocket all the time. That get out of jail free card. It must be amazing feeling to be able to just the incompetence level, whether it's harassment or you use the N word or whatever it is to just pull that shit out of your ass anytime you want to. You know, it, those are the worst kind of people. It's a fucking hypocrite. And it's easy to be able to use that whenever you want. And you can be a bad person and just say, OK, well, Jesus likes me, so we're good. It's his will. He's going to take me to the path. Well, you know where your path is right now, Kirk? Shut the fuck up and put a mask on and play football, asshole. How about that? There's your path right now. And believe me, the money going to make that path a lot easier for you as well. You fucking right. scam artist. <laughs> And the funny thing is, people are like, oh, well, he can say whatever he wants. It's his opinion. But the fact is, he works for a private company. Right. Who's promoting safety 
during this COVID time. And he's going on the complete opposite end of the spectrum. And I'm sure they're not very happy with him and with the Vikings. How many allies can this guy have in the locker room? They have to hate his guts. I'm serious, man. How many allies can this guy have? What, like the long snapper? <laughs> Like, I mean, who the hell does this guy even talk to? The punter might like him. I don't know. Uh, I mean, really? He's a Uh. typical guy who doesn't give a shit about anybody but himself. He has no swag. Quarterbacks are sometimes in their own bubble to a certain extent. Some of them, you know, they're they're not always with the team a lot, but they're always respected because they're the QB. But he has no swagger about him. He doesn't walk into the room and they're like, that's our QB. Right there. That's the man. That's my quarterback. That's my quarterback. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I just don't see that happening. He walks in the room and it's like, hey, geek's here. Hey, the dork's here. You know, like, hey, you know, you walk in like the guy that has like the short shorts coming in a gym class guy. like With goggles on. Yeah, with goggles on. (laughs) Like he's that guy. You're like, really, dude? Like, hey, guys, here to play ball. (laughs) Douchebag. God, I hate him. I'm glad... We have something concrete now to show that he's a complete piece of shit. Oh, God. Uh, Yeah. Other things could be argued, but I think this kind of puts a nail in the coffin for him. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully a nail is actually put in his real coffin at some point (laughs) due to COVID. We'll see. Anyway. (laughs) Uh, All right. Sad to say... But Noel and I are getting old, and we've been looking for ways to sharpen our hand-eye coordination and reaction speed, but also like to throw something around outside with our kids once in a while. Then we found this product, Hico Sticks. Hico Sticks has three prongs, three colors, throw it, call the color, and catch the color. Simple, right? It's way harder than it looks, and there are so many ways to increase the difficulty that challenges even the best athletes. For example, Odell Beckham, Alvin Kamara, Joe Burrow, just to name a few. They use it to take their training to the next level. So Hico Sticks is the winner of the Men's Health Award. Even though it's already being used across all major pro sports and college programs, doesn't mean it's just for the elite. It also has the national standard for K-12 physical education curriculum. With so many shutdowns and gyms closing, Hico Sticks is the perfect tool to add to your home workout. Or you can just make it a fun competition with your family, you know, while you're sitting at home. You can go to HicoSticks.com for more details. When you order, don't forget to use our promo code, Beltway Bros, and get 10% off your entire order. Catch Hico Sticks today. Moving on to the Washington football team, they announced its starting quarterback. Have you heard about this, Noel? You don't pay attention, about right? About damn time! <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Noel, it's, it's not Alex Smith. Uh, thank goodness. It was weighing on me. Weighing more on my mind than on his leg. That's for damn sure. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, if anybody doesn't know, it's Dwayne Haskins. So that's some good news. Coach Rivera was asked about the decision and said, quote, I made a commitment 10 years ago to another young quarterback, and I just told him, hey, you know what? I'm choosing you because I believe in you. That's really how I feel about Dwayne. He's lived up to his part of our conversation in January. Because of that, I'm living up to mine. He deserves the opportunity. He's going to get my support. Hopefully we can ride it as long as I rode it with Cam, end quote. Uh, Rivera was also asked about the similarities that he sees in Cam Newton to Haskins. I mean, God help us if that's the case, but... I don't... Come on. I think there were a few years there where where I'd be like, damn, I wish we had that guy. Right, but he's a scumbag too, so uh, we're not going to get into that. But yes, if he's on the field and he plays MVP caliber ball, I'm all right with that. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. But, quote, first of all, it's the desire to win. That, to me, is one of the overriding things that they both share. In similarities, their work ethic, they have both worked hard in their off-seasons getting themselves ready, end quote. So, this is really good news, in my opinion. I mean, I would have been seriously concerned if Haskins wasn't named the starter, first and foremost. Who else was going to start? Well, I, that's what I mean. We could have been in some deep shit. Kyle Allen knew the offense. I mean, there there was conversation about that because the shortened off-season, not being ah. able to do preseason games. I mean, shit, no, Kyle Allen, what? was 6-1 and one or whatever his first seven games and then played terribly after that. But I'm just saying he knew the off. No, I, if, I know. I know. I agree with you there. So, you know, I think it's great. Rivera challenged him. He made it clear it was a competition, and Haskins came through. So that's the first step, right? <laughs> oh. I mean, we're, we're what? Uh, a week and a half? We're a week and a half away from the first game. At some point in time, it needed to come out. Uh, and, no, no, no. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that. The fact that he named him the starter, he's actually going to start, is a good sign. And it sounded like Rivera put him through the ringer a little bit and kind of scared him 
with the competition thing. I mean, we've talked about it on this show. You know, like, why are you calling it a competition? That kind of thing. Hopefully, he took it seriously, and, and it, sent, it looks like he did. You know, he worked his ass off and seems to have the playbook down and all that. And I think, unlike Gruden, the coaching staff is going to work with his strengths and what he does well, yep. hopefully. You never heard one word from Gruden about that. I mean, really, from anybody, any player that he had, that he was going to work his offense around certain players. And that's definitely a welcome change, to say the least. Well, so, it makes sense in a quarterback-heavy league where that's the most important position on the field that you would work around a guy's strengths. I'm not a serious X's and O's guys, but if I'm the best player on the whatever game that I'm playing, I would think that I would want the game to revolve around my strengths, not my weaknesses and like four square peg round hole. Well, that's why he sucks. Yeah, that's why he sucks. And, you know, enjoy it in Jacksonville, asshole. And he could have done that with Alex Smith. Yeah. And he completely screwed that up. Whatever. But thank God we've moved on from Gruden. But I still think that Haskins definitely has some growing up to do by all of the tweets and shit that he's done throughout the offseason. But took the challenge, did what he had to do in the offseason earned it in training camp and here we are so that's that's good to see I've been an advocate for him since day one I wanted this I wanted the success for him and you know I haven't been all of a sudden just rah-rah every single time I think he has some character flaws that need to be resolved and I hope with success if there is success those don't start to rear their ugly head more right now at times he felt like he was on borrowed time I mean if you're cocky during that Imagine when you're successful. Holy shit. He's going to have some rocky times. There's no doubt about that. This team isn't very good. They don't have an experienced wide receiving core. Tight end, still question mark. Offensive line, who the hell knows? I just want to see some serious growth out of this guy. I want to see him be successful on the field for him. And maybe they can get some quality wins in the process and show growth. And if that can happen, then I'm happy with the season. Because we know we've got our guy. Then they can really start not just putting the playbook around him and putting plays around him. They can start putting personnel around this guy. Because right now, I think they are in a tad bit of a holding pattern to say, okay, are we going to just open the floodgates, start putting all these major pieces around a guy where there still might be question marks down the road? Because if he's not successful this year... I think he's not going to be their guy. But that's the thing, Noel, is it the chicken or the egg? If he doesn't have playmakers around him, it's very difficult for a quarterback, sure. especially a second-year quarterback, to be successful. I mean, yeah, if you have Aaron Rodgers out there or, or somebody like that, they can make it happen, but he's far from that. And if he fails this year with the kind of weapons or lack thereof around him, it might not necessarily be his fault. No, no, but I think that people, and especially the coaches there, will see the development in him regardless of the talent around him. That's my point. If he's doing well in spite of it, is what I mean. So, and, yes, would he be better if he had, you know... Amari Cooper. Amari here, Cooper and good. Antonio Brown on one side and Amari Cooper on the other side or whomever it is? Of course, but he's still going to show that growth in spite of it if he does, if he's able to project himself in a certain way in the huddle. Small things, character-based as well. Can he take a hard loss? Can he come back from throwing an interception return for a touchdown? Things of that nature. That's what I'm talking about. Those are the things that they're going to be looking at as far as growth. And now looking back and reflecting on and Rivera's strategy in this, yes. The only concern that I was having is there was a lot of talk about Alex Smith, a lot of talk about, oh, look at this guy, look at you know what he's doing and all that. And Haskins, right now, with the character aspect of things, I didn't know, and I still don't know, how far he's come with his mind as far as, can I handle the success or the failures? But at least it seems like Norv Jr. is pretty happy with what he's been doing. Absolutely. And he went into specifics about saying that, well, and Rivera as well, even three weeks ago, he was a tick behind. And then two weeks ago, he was right there with it. And now he's ahead of it. So the thing I like about Haskins is he seems to learn very, very quickly. Yeah. And he doesn't seem to make the same mistakes again. I've said it before. I've never seen a guy progress that quickly from looking like he's never touched a football before to actually looking like a serviceable NFL quarterback like five games later. Right. So I think that's something we can kind of hang our hat on. I think that he's impressed them, and I don't think they would have started him if he didn't. No, absolutely. And and the thing is, Matt, if we had preseason, 
the writing would have been on the wall. If he started the third preseason game, yeah. okay, and played the majority of the game where they usually play, like, I don't know, depending on how successful the offense is, sometimes they'll go into the third quarter. The writing would have been on the wall there. Rivera really wouldn't have had to have made an announcement at that point if Kyle Allen is playing almost virtually the entire game of the fourth preseason game that nobody gives a shit about. So he wouldn't have really had to make that. People are kind of in the dark on a lot of things except for like the 10 reporters that they have sitting there on a day-to-day to see Haskins has taken the majority of the snaps in practice. But we yeah. would have known as fans in the third preseason game that, okay, he played three quarters. He played decent. He got out of it uninjured. We're good to go. Well, Mohamed Sanu was released by the Patriots. Haskins is a fan of him, apparently. So... I think that would be a. a I think we need bodies, man. There are certain positions where we absolutely do need bodies. And and like we were going back to the Haskins situation, the more the merrier. It's a win win. If the guy does well, he brings a little bit of veteran savvy to the locker room. He's been around. He played with Atlanta, he played with New England. The guy's been around. Bring him in. If he sucks, cut his ass. He's better than what they got. A couple of weapons. Give Haskins a few crumbs here, you know, and see what he does. But like I said, If he comes out and plays like complete dog shit to the point that they've got to put Kyle Allen in, Haskins is toast. But if he comes out, and even if the team wins, goes 3-13 and again, but he shows fight, he shows character, he shows evolution during the process of the season, and they say, look, I think this is the guy. Now we can start building things around and bringing in some real shit for this guy to throw to, or whatever it is, and protect him. Evolution. You can't bring that up when we're talking about it. Sorry, (laughs) Kirk. Sorry. Sorry, Kirk. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. As always, we're on all major podcast platforms. Please rate, review, and subscribe. If you like this show, please share it on social media. Again, please follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and the Facebook group. Oh, and the website as well. We are going to be off on Monday for Labor Day. I need a break, Noel. Three-day weekend. Yeah. But we hope you guys enjoy your weekend, and we will see you on Wednesday.